Mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself, now that's true power. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be 7 of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's episode of 7 Good Minutes, we learn about how to build self-discipline and mental toughness. Enjoy. Self-discipline can seem difficult, but can be simplified to one simple concept, automating your behavior. You don't need more self-discipline than you already have if you establish new habits in your life, default actions you can take when tempted away from long-term goals. Imagine someone offers you a chocolate bar while you're on a diet. The temptation is staring straight in your face, a delicious bomb of sugar, and lures you in almost as if your life depends on eating it. You wriggle and squirm, trying to draw from your willpower and say no. Two minutes later, if not sooner, the chocolate bar is gone. After all, one chocolate bar won't screw up your diet, right? The problem is, the next time someone offers you a chocolate bar, it will be harder to resist. Soon, you'll drop your diet completely and go back to your regular eating habits, losing sight of your long-term goal to lower weight and become healthier. Now imagine your reaction is automated with a habit. At the sight of a chocolate bar, you become self-aware of your craving. Instead of giving in, you recognize the craving for what it is, a detour that will take you away from your long-term goal. You remind yourself you can eliminate the craving by eating a piece of fruit. All of it happens in an instant. It's as natural to you as your normal morning routine. You don't need to exert your self-discipline to do it, do you? Automated behavior easily prevents you from breaking your resolutions. But how do you do it? Research shows that it takes anywhere from 18 to 254 days to form a new habit. On average, it takes a little more than two months, 66 days, to make a new behavior automatic. Each day you repeat the wanted behavior, you need less discipline to make it stick. 66 days later, It takes little discipline to maintain the habit. It becomes automatic. Charles Duhigg, the author of The Power of Habit, Why We Do What We Do in Life and Business, breaks down a habit into three elements, cue, action, and reward. Your brain follows a simple process. When it sees a familiar cue, it makes you perform the associated action, usually with little awareness, in order to get the reward it craves. For example, if your cue is being offered a chocolate bar, your action is eating it, and the reward is the sweet taste of chocolate in your mouth. Fortunately, we can use the exact same process to form positive habits, or change existing ones, and make our habits automated. Take the example with the chocolate bar. Let's assume the sweet taste is the reward you want. The next time you get a craving to eat a candy bar, replace it with an apple instead. The first time will be the hardest. That's when you need self-discipline the most. Once you repeat the same behavior several times, it will get easier and easier to replace the chocolate with an apple. Several weeks later, you will grab an apple at the side of a chocolate bar by default. Developing new habits is the essence of self-discipline, but there's a better way to introduce new habits than changing them one by one. Keystone Habits Charles Duhigg also talks about keystone habits, patterns that lead to the transformation of several other areas of life. Unsurprisingly, one of the most powerful habits that can lead to changing other patterns is regular physical activity. Studies show that regular physical activity may lead to reduced overeating, smoking, alcohol consumption, and risk-taking. 
Consequently, just one change in your daily routine can help you introduce numerous other healthy changes with little to no resistance. Another keystone habit is food journaling. Research shows that people who journal their intake of food ate less and made healthier decisions. In the studies, none of the participants were encouraged to change any habits besides writing down what they ate every day. The change, as in the case of physical activity, happened naturally. Keystone habits are powerful, but don't stop at just these two behaviors. You can apply Duhigg's findings to other areas of your life and look for other keystone habits. Here are some potential keystone habits you can develop in your life and expect a positive chain reaction. Meditation. There are at least 20 scientifically proven benefits of meditation that carry over to all areas of life. Waking up earlier. Waking up even 15 minutes earlier can greatly affect each day by reducing stress and hurry. Trying a new thing every single day. Stepping outside your comfort zone and doing things you have never done before will help you discover new hobbies, meet new people, and face your fears. Saving money. Having a cushion of savings leads to decreased stress and more financial safety that spills over to other aspects of your life. Expressing gratitude for things you're thankful for. Studies show that writing down three things that went well on a given day led to steady increases in happiness. That does it for today's episode of 7 Good Minutes. Please take a moment to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. If you have questions, you can ask those by going to 7goodminutes.com slash askclyde or get me on Twitter at Clyde Lee Dennis. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.